early is because I don't always know what I'm doing on YouTube. So I want to make sure that this shows up where it's supposed to and everybody can find me. Good. It looks like it is, um, let's see, scheduled for 7.55. Okay, that should be, it should be good. Right? 2, 3, 24, 7.55. All right. So theoretically, it's live. Let's find out. Um, I'm clicking on it and I see. Now, I'm also just a little bit up and down and I could go sideways if I want, but I think I'm going to leave it like this. I know that's not uh, as easy to see. Uh, let's see. Moderation heals everyone's self. We'll close that for now. And I see Debbie is here and Brandy Blank Art is here. Hello, hello. We've got a few people that are on. Hello. I'm so glad to see you guys. Um, thank you for that. So what I've got going on now is we've got our live chat. Um, hi, Z Z Zakia. Zakia, I believe. Uh, Christy Arlen, she says, hello, honey. Hi, Danita. How are you, my friend? So I don't always do these lives, but it looks like it is definitely going just on the channel. So everybody should be able to find me. And I'm going to ramble for a few more minutes because we're not top of the hour yet before I actually start officially talking hello from kentucky says red and debbie said it did pop up on my screen yay hi carol hello i'm so excited to see all of you guys and i think uh laos laos deandy and deandal where is that okay i'm seeing it two different ways on here so hello if i didn't say hello to you properly hello and i uh see that laura is here a couple of people perfect honey she says excellent um i'm really glad you guys are joining me. So we got a bunch of stuff lined up for today. And I think I'm going to be doing more YouTube live chats because they're great fun. But um, I just, again, wanted to thank all of you guys for finding me here. I, I think that's great. I'll be putting stuff in the description once this is done that I'll be talking about and referring to. But we got a bunch of stuff. So I hope you guys are ready for some fun because I am. So it's a few, uh, still a few minutes before. Um, again, I didn't expect this to go quite so swimmingly so i'm pleasantly surprised hi roxanne you found me hi conyers yay i'm glad it's it's looking easy to get me ha <sighs> so little worlds now i know we're a couple minutes early but i figure people be joining in let's just get right into it um i have been making wonderful fun with little worlds. Uh, oh, and she says, actually, it's Elizabeth. Uh, <laughs> that's Bavarian for feisty girl. Oh, Laus Diandl. Is that right? Laus Diandl. Uh, hello, Marianne. That's fabulous. Yeah, I'm, I'm like reading in two different places with various eye abilities, and I knew I was messing that one up, but I'm so glad you're here. Feisty girl is an awfully good little uh, name for yourself. I think that's awesome. So I've been having so much fun with these little worlds. And I really wanted to share it with you. Now, I've done another little YouTube that was just short, just kind of introducing you to the concept. And then I did a little uh, event online with one of my other groups. I've been putting stuff up on my website like a crazy person, which I'm going to give you my website um, right directly over to the spotlight area right now because right now i just added so i just added that i've just added a bunch of um adorable little worlds exactly right hi friend says um irene hi good to see you sue you found me hello my dear and i just want you to right click on my link or double click or whatever it is you do in your various clickings so that you can go look at that later because I just added a bunch of one-of-a-kind little kits, and I don't want you to miss out on those. So I'll talk about that later, but for those of you that are here early, you can kind of multitask and take a look. We are going to do some, we're going to do an overview of the whole little concept, and we're going to make something. And I'm going to show everybody this again later, but I'll show you all right now. This is the little guy we're going to make. It's just a little frog weirdo. All right, out of polymer clay. We're going to make this together today, um, and I'll talk more about that later. But I love creating just like a little creature that can go in these little worlds. So we'll be we'll be talking about the whole concept, and then we'll be making a thing too. So um, uh, Patricia is here. Ahoja to you, and Lynn is here. The reason my, a lot of my pals say Ahoja is my little aloha sign. I live in Maui, so aloha slash ahoja for everybody but since i'm often in selfie mode hi lynn my aloha sign looks like ahoja so that's what that's about um and we we get a kick out of that or at least 
I get a kick out of that. Um, so I'm glad when you guys say that as well. But I love being here in Maui. I've been here for four years. Um, most of you know this, but a few of you don't. Um, I My brother has lived here for all, t- almost 20 years. And I right before COVID, I stopped down for a little visit. I had just finished sort of a world tour thing and wasn't quite sure where I was going to land next. And I just asked him, I said, hey, do you mind if I just kind of hang out for a little while and figure out what's next. And he goes, yeah, stay as long as you want. And so here I still am. It's a beautiful place. I love being here. I have, uh, he's got a little condo that he rents and it, he, he's by himself. So, and he had an extra bedroom. How perfect. Uh, and my little bedroom is my studio. So everything's crammed in this small area. I've got a beautiful window in front of me, which is closed at the moment. So there's not sun all in my face, but I have my little row of orchids in front of me. And then I look out over the top of the other apartment or condo building here, but there's interspersed with trees. And then I get to see uh, Mount Haleakala all the time. I have a right in my vision is Mount Haleakala, which is just a beautiful thing for my heart to feel that lovely uh, mountain right there. So it's a beautiful place to be creative. And I love popping online in my various social places and sharing all this extra creativity that I feel being here and being able to soak in the beautiful weather all the time and just create. So that's what we're all about today. So I hello again to all of my friends that are here. Please ask questions as we go along. I will do my best to keep an eye on things, but let's get into it. So what the heck am I talking about with these little worlds? Um, I just have always liked, and I think you guys too, this is why you're listening and excited about it, have always liked sort of creating a little thing. Remember when you're kids and you've got your little various dolls or toys or whatever, and you like they you make the stuff for them, like here's their restaurant and they're gonna get in their car and go down over to the disco or whatever. But I can remember spending a lot more time as a child creating the little universes that they lived in than actually ever playing. I don't think I really cared about playing, uh, but I definitely cared about making all of the world. Suzanne says, Ahoja, I just figured out how to use the chat. Oh, I'm so glad. It's good to see you, Suzanne. Uh, Hi, Susie from Arizona. Suzanne is our pal from Switzerland. So glad to have you here with us. Danita is here as well, our Colorado pal. We've got people from all over. Um, Hi, you guys. I'll be interspersing my chat with hellos as we go along, but I, I love having you guys here with me. It gives me wonderful energy to know you're all there and and watching and listening and writing. It's just great. So anyway, I've always loved making these little worlds. And and kind of isn't that what we do often as artists? We're recreating either a world in our head or the world that we see as a painting, as a sculpture, as whatever. We're kind of doing this all the time. But specifically, what these particular little worlds I'm talking about are intended to be temporary. They're intended to just sort of showcase some of the art and the tr- treasures that you have and you just make them and then enjoy them until you're bored of them or they get dusty whichever comes first and then you make a new one so ideally it's something like this where there's a little dish and i'm going to go through some of the different ingredients in a minute and then you put something in it like in this case moss or it could be uh, stone chips or sand or something and then you you know set a little creature inside or whatever you happen to have here's one of the little foxy friends that i've got Uh, and then that that becomes a little world you can add um, little twigs to make him into a forest. You could add a big crystal in case he's a mystical guy, or you can make a little house of some kind for him. It, it's just, it's never ending what you can do. Um, Suzanne says, uh, Serenity Clay, hello, Jean. Hi from Tucson. Hi, Jean. Suzanne says, however, using the chat makes Christy's head cut off. <laughs> Is it? In portrait instead of landscape, it's, it's a whole thing. I'm working on it. Uh, but for now, I'm going to leave it here so I don't ruin everything. Uh, Lynn says, ah, oh, I forgot the time change doesn't happen in Hawaii. I'm late. You're only a minute or two late, Lynn, because I started early. So um, I got in early expecting that I was going to have a little bit more trouble figuring it out, as often I can. And it popped right on, no problem. So I was just rambling for a while. So we are, uh, you're good, girl. Uh, and yes, we do not have time change in Hawaii, which makes it very interesting for people when they're trying to do, um, you know, the 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 time translation from where you are. Uh, but Lynn says, glad you made it, Suzanne. Yes. Uh, and Lynn, I'm glad you made it too. Ahoja says, Janina. Ahoja, everyone. Um, Zakaya says, oh, that's a perfect meditation spot. Mountain 
in your spirit or picks video scenery background. Yeah, I would love to be able to have that mountain in my videos, but it is what I look out of the window. So if I were to flip it around and have that in the background, which I would love, it would just be glary and weird. And I would also be facing my bookcase, which is less helpful. But I will go outside and take some videos of that and add them as I go along because I'm I've got a little series of, you know, inspirational kind of let's uh, let's do a creative nudge kind of a thing. And it, my intent is to wander all over the place and take pictures. Barb says I can look at a screen big enough to see or only see a tiny picture and the comments. So I'm going back to the big pic. I get it, guys. I really do. So whatever works. Um, good to see you again, too, Cheryl. Um, whatever works for you. If you can comment, great. If you can't, I'll know that you're there. I can feel you in my heart. So what are we going to do today? We are going to, first of all, take a look at, like I just showed you, some di how I go about this. What I kind of look for in little dishes and little accoutrements and why I pick one or the other. A couple little tricks you can do if you've got something and you know, you need to adjust it. Anyway, we'll talk about that in a minute. And then we will actually get our polymer clay out and make a little creature. Okay. And I will talk about all of that stuff as we go along and fill you in. So in a minute, I'm going to just flip this phone around so you can stare at my, my work surface and go from there. Uh, Sue said, cast you, cast you to the TV. And the chat is still open. Oh, that's nice. So, yeah, I've heard you guys, that if you have the ability to cast it to the TV, then you kind of get the best of both worlds, right? And I I forget because, uh, like, on Facebook Live, I think I can only do portrait, whatever. So I always forget whether I can do this way, that way, whatever. I'm getting there. You know, the biggest thing is I'm going to blab and you're going to see stuff. So that's all that really matters, right? All right, so guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my studio lights. I'm going to flip the camera around as I do. And then we're going to get right on into it. How does that sound? But please keep asking. Uh, Darlene says, okay, uh, been here, but I had to change the password. These things happen. Technology, it's always something. Um, yay, made it, says Rena. Good to see you. I'm going to keep an eye on everybody and try to comment. But if I miss mentioning and somebody else knows an answer or whatever feel free to join in and um say whatever it is you need to say uh to help out if any questions that i missed or wait till i pop my face back on again and ask it again of course creativity in my heart the creatures are wholeheartedly love 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 so much fun thank you zakaya um biggest uh thing is that you're here right sue yes uh don't forget everyone to hit the button for the like button for christy oh debbie thank you for saying that please do hit that like button in fact, I'm going to pause for a moment so you can, um, or if as you go along, it's just fine. But it is very helpful. It helps with the algorithms to get this spread out for more people to see it and that kind of thing, which is always fantastic, right? I like I like a large audience, um, and um, it's uh, aloha on YouTube, ahoja. Well, I think I do see it's ah, it flipped me around. Man, technology is crazy. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna flip this around. Are you ready? Which I think you got to see my clothes in the background, so that's exciting and fun. All right, so let's see if it has gotten itself centered, which I think it has. Great. Okay, now what we're doing is looking at my work table, so you can see I have various little weirdo creatures here, and this is the guy we're going to be making. We're going to be making a little froggy weirdo guy soon. Let me just make sure that I am straight as much as I can be, because I know that's really nuts if something's a little crooked and you have to stare at it crooked the whole time. So forgive me for anybody whose eyes I'm messing with. I'm trying to make that better for everybody, but it's hard. Okay, so we're going to put this guy aside, but what I'm using for him is polymer clay. I just mixed up a medium green. You can follow along when it's time, or you can come back and watch this later um, at your convenience, and it's all good. Okay, so let me get this. I don't like to get too close because then my camera has trouble with focus, but I'm going to pull it down just a little bit more. I think we're looking good here. All right, so the first thing we're going to talk about is when I do these little worlds, what I am ideally looking for is some kind of fun little dish to create the world in so that I can put in my sand, I can put in my um, mosses or whatever and create the world. So I'm going to look at dishes first. Now, these are all ones that I currently have on my site right now. So I go out there, I find really cool things. And I put them up on my site for you to buy. Two reasons. Number one, I got to make a living somehow, right? And But number two is if I find something, I can buy it in bulk. 
then it's a little cheaper for me and I can share it with you. All good. Um, so let's see. Janine says this. Uh, that's what I was thinking, Sue. When Christy is bigger than life, it's good. <laughs> and uh, let's see. Um, spinning. I love the casting, too. It's weird that the picture pixelates for about 30 seconds and it corrects. That's wild. Uh, remember to like the video. Thank you guys for uh, reminding each other of that. Um, when you flipped, it pixelated again. Yeah, I believe that. Uh, yes, we've got our little guy here who can, who's going to be fun to do. So, all right, we're caught up. So this is what I've got. And I like an assortment of things because I never know what mood I'm going to be in. So I like choices, which is pretty much how I like everything in life. I need 16 different options of snacks. And I want to make sure that, you know, I have more than one house I can live in and obviously more than one dish that I could make my little world in, right? So this one is a little wooden dish. Um, this one's a scallop shell. I've got a couple of these wonderful little ceramic-y dishes. On my, these are all on my site, at least as of now that I'm talking to you. As you guys know, things come and go on my site. Sometimes I have things for a long time. Sometimes it's just what I got, and then it's gone. This one I only have a few of, and as uh, obviously February is our month of love and hearts, um, if that's interesting to you, go grab it before they're gone because there's not many of those. And then this is uh, another thing you can do is go to, this is a little dirty, but go to thrift stores and look for stuff like this thing is kind of fun. It's just a kind of molded glass, whatever. But it's just it's just nifty to be able to go find different things and use them. I'm going to use the, for my examples, I'm going to use this wooden one later so we can see it a little bit better. Um, another thing is be aware of mishaps right? So I had this lovely little bowl that I got. Now I can kintsugi this thing and put like, um, use epoxy clay to repair it and then add the gold in there. That could be fun. But I also thought, okay, what can I do? This is the interesting thing about creativity. When stuff messes up, it gives you an opportunity to reimagine what it could be since it isn't what it should be which sometimes can be pretty exciting. So I thought of a couple things. First of all, if this one was just a little world, it almost just has like a step and I could get like another little um, stone here to like make a little pathway. And then of course, if I, you know, put my mosses and stuff inside there and then have a little creature that lives inside here, I could make like a big mushroom that popped out of it. So sometimes when something does weird, it just gives you a chance to play. So I would ideally get another dish now and put sand in that dish, set this down, add some more little mossy bits and just turn it into a whole freaking thing, right? Because why not? And um, while, you, while you're playing with something, when something breaks, just set it aside where you can see it so that it keeps on playing in your brain until you come up with a plan. And sometimes that plan might take a while before you figure out what it is, but it could indeed happen. Another thing you could do is you could set it upside down and turn it into like a little, a little creature comes out of it this way. You'd have to do something on the top since we can see this that we don't need to, but we could turn this into like a little roof or something. And now we've got another option. So things like this, this came from Amazon. It was broken. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, what can I do with it? There are things that you can do with it. Um, Ginny says, I found a, a blue, a large blue mussel shell while I was beach coming and some moss outside my front door. So she's practically got her tiny, tiny world made already. Hi, Dale. Hi, Cheryl. Hello, Corinne, our pal from the UK. Good to have you here. All right. So here's another little option. As you guys know, I often do stuff with epoxy sculpt. So epoxy sculpt is my brand of choice here in the U.S. Now, I know in Canada and our friends in Europe and other places, you can't always get epoxy sculpt, although I believe they're working on that. So whatever you can find in your land. But this is a two-part epoxy clay. The reason why I love this is it's very easy to use and mold with, and it stays soft and sticky for about an hour. So that means I can shove a bunch of stuff in. So what I would do is if, if just for something fun, is when you get one of your little dishes, um, I will take, as I did here, my epoxy clay and I add little legs on. Now, a lot of times I have things like this lying around when I'm doing other epoxy clay projects and I've over mixed and then I have some leftover that's starting to get too hard and I can't use it for the project. I don't want it to go to waste. I'll just stick a leg on something. Um, but this one, I, I put the legs on and I kind of pressed some sand in it. So this is the first step. So now I have a dish that stands up 
for no reason. But what I'll do next is I'll go back and start adding more around here, maybe turn this into a tide pool. So I'll put a little blob on here, I'll add some shells, and I'll create some little sea anemones out of uh, head pins and um, little tubes, tube beads and stuff, and I'll just have this cluster up and around and turn it into these legs that are crawling up into the bowl and creating a little world that way and and you can add stuff to it like i just grabbed this little thing because i had a little silver octopus so maybe the octopus lives inside here you know when you have little stuff that you found or things that you buy from artists like me or others you can imagine how they would look set up in a little world that you make for them so i think that's really fun so i want you to remember that you have other options when things break or you can combine more than one together to make a crazy hodgepodge or you can even add legs to things and that is really super fun ah uh, let's see Conyers Conyer says, upside down, it's a dragon cave. Yes, when we were talking about that broken one. I absolutely can see a dragon coming out of here with some of his treasures piled around. You could create moss that goes up and over this. So it could be like a hobbit-style dragon. There's a bunch of crazy options that you do. Denise says, my links are not acting like the links in here, but you can copy and paste into your browser. Um, yes, to go find the various things. Like I already did a, um, a, a link over to my website but i'm gonna do it again because i can so here you go here's the link again often danny will help me out with uh adding links and things which i really appreciate but that will take you straight to the spotlight so it's not the home page we can get there and all the different things that are on sale right now which includes a lot of little world kits so when i do a little world kit i will envision how i think it should look i'll get a little guy that I made and a bowl and all the bits and pieces and take a picture of what that looks like and then pull it all apart and bag it up and you get to recreate it yourself. All right, we're still talking about little dishes and such. So what if you have a big deep dish? This is a coconut shell, uh, a bowl, and you want to fill it with stuff, but it's like, I don't have enough sand to fill that whole thing all the way up with sand. That's awkward. So here's a trick. I can take foil and you can leave it just like that, but obviously if you have sand, that foil is just going to start going all, or the sand is going to go all down and around in the foil. So what I do then is I take like carpenter's tape or, you know, painter's tape, however you want to call it. And I start like crisscrossing this all over to uh, make a surface so that then I can put my stone chips or my, um, you know, uh, sand or whatever it is, and it won't just all go down and make a giant mess. So I'm not going to do the whole thing because you get the drill. I mean, it's not hard. Um, so this is a really great way, and obviously you might have to trim or push down any tape that gets in the way, and then just start filling it up with your stuff. Another good thing about something like this is if you are trying to put in uh, like a, a tree, okay? So I can now cut through the tape a little bit, and maybe to use one of my tools to sort of poke a little bit of a hole. And now if I have some interesting branches, I can insert them in this foil, theoretically, and they'll stand up much better than if they're just trying to hold them, themselves up in the moss. So i got to make another hole, but you get the point with that one. So I could do this, and then, of course, the moss and stuff can go all around this, and you've got a nice little world where you have your sticks and stuff um, attached a bit. Because sometimes that can be a bit of um, a challenge when you're trying to stick things like sticks and twigs into a little world they can fall down a lot so what do you do so the easiest thing of course is if you have enough sand and I always recommend sand sand is great it holds everything down it's heavy uh, you can put things in it and it'll hold them in place really well so sand is a terrific um, thing to play with when you're creating a little world um, but you have something shallow like this, uh, that's not going to work. So you could take your same little dude here, and you could just grab a little of your polymer clay um, and create, and you could do this with plastiline clay as well, plastiline, plasticine, um, clay, modeling clay, even Play-Doh, and you can use this and push it down and then put your stuff around it right? Um, and that way you can take it back off again, no harm. Or if you don't care about this here because you're always going to fill it with something, you could use a glue gun too and glue down your bigger pieces then add your sands or stone chips or whatever. And that's one thing I wanted to mention to you is that whenever you're filling stuff up, let's talk about fillings. Um, I always use something that I could um, 
bag it back up and then use it again later so it's not a big mess, right? Because if I'm just using dirt, dirt's messy, right? And it gets moist, it gets clumpy, etc. So the best things are stone chips. And I've got, on my side, I've got, again, as of today when I'm talking, uh, but I got a lot of these, so I'll probably keep having them. These jade stone pebbles, which I'm loving, they are the best. But then I have, you know, other different ones too. I've got a couple different kinds of sand. You can even use something like lavender uh, to sprinkle over the top and cover the surface of something. So there's a lot of choices that you have for filling it up. All right, so let's see. Vicky says it looks like fun. It is so much fun. The Siamese cat. Oh, yes. Um, I, I did some little Siamese cats for uh, my diamond member group, and they were a lot of fun. Uh, Hoja says, uh, Denise, H Hoja, my dear. Suzanne says, the dish with legs, something climbing up onto it. Yes. So you could add, like, you know, you can add polymer on top of epoxy clay as well. Depends on what you're working with. I like epoxy clay because it grabs really well, but from here on, then polymer can grab onto that. I've got various um, videos here on YouTube and elsewhere that talk about that. But you could make like mossy little clumps and then have something that's crawling up and back into the dish, some, you know, snaky dragon creature or a parade of caterpillars or whatever you come up with um, to make it fun. Okay, so that is some of the things that you can fill the dish with so that you can add all your other little bits and pieces. What, uh, and moss, I, I have moss on my site too, but you can get moss in a number of places. I've got, this is real moss. It's got a little color added to it so it stays um, good. Of course, I've gone off into the woods sometimes and found when I was in Oregon, found moss there because there's so much of that and lichens. You know, you can have all these little bits and pieces. So just depending on where you live, you might have access to various sands, rock chips, mosses, flower petals, that kind of thing. All right. So let's talk about once you've created your dish, which I'm going to grab a little dish here. And I'm going to put some sand in this dish because why not? And you, you've created the beginnings of a little world here. What kind of things are you going to add to make this fun? Okay. So let's say we've got my little... My little thing here with some nice little beach sand in it. Okay. And I've got... Oh, another thing too with epoxy clay is like if you've got a dish like this and you want to make it more stable, you can put a couple of little legs underneath the dish too and that's a helpful thing. So let's say I used my little octopus that I had here, uh, my little silver one. Um, what other things can you put? Well, obviously shell. So if you have any kind of shell collection, that's just ideal. Um, I'm going to take octopus out of there because the size now is just weird. Uh, and put in things like this, a little starfish that you find around, other nifty little shells. So if you've got some wonderful shells that you found and you're looking for a really cool way to showcase them, duh. I mean, this is like a fantastic way. And I just added these to my site because I love them. And they are just glass bubbles. So these are little glass bubble beads. They've got holes in them, but they always look like the, they look like those fisherman um, net um, floats, but also they just look like bubbles. So look at how fun, uh, now it's a face. Um, <laughs> but just look how fun it is adding a little something like that to the scene. And it makes it just an interesting thing to look at. Um, I, I love how that turned out. And that face is really cute, and but it's also like distracting. So I'm going to just move these around. And you can create a little world like this to showcase some of your treasures. How fun is that, right? Okay. So now what else we got going on? Let's look at other things that can be added to your world. And this is where we get into rocks and minerals. Oh my gosh, yes. So just crazy stuff. Obviously, these are uh, calcite desert roses. I love those amethyst crystals. I have little amethyst points that I have on my site that you can get. You know, calcite. I think I said calcite. But whatever interesting um, rocks that you've got. You know, you might have some wonderful things that you found at the shows or found in your in your walking around time and want to showcase how pretty those are in uh, a dish and they may become the main thing like you might put in some um sand you know and then put in your favorite little piece here and a little a little guy i'll use this guy again because he's around and he now he's got this in his universe right or you turn it into something and make tiny little guys and it's like something they're looking at and part of their temple or who even knows what so there's just like so 
many um, fun little things you can do with just the stuff you already have lying around. And I do want to say that is that you know on my site I'm always selling stuff. But I know you have a ton of stuff lying around. You don't need to buy anything from me. I like it when you do. I really do. It helps me pay the bills. And, you know, we all, as artists, need you supporters. It's fantastic. But you have a lot of stuff. This is a perfect opportunity to just go through the things you have and try to decide what you could do with them, how you could make little worlds. For example, I have this wonderful little basket that my sister made once upon a time. Isn't that cute? That would be so wonderful. You could make little red apples in there and set it on a hillside with a sort of a tree near somebody with a picnic table. I mean, you know, there's so many things you could do. I've used this one before to show you guys uh, the just the fun of this. I don't even know what this was ever supposed to be, but uh, this is a, a gal that I bought. I bought some different bronzes and such, casting things from, but I love how this looks. I mean, just setting this in the mosses, it just has a mystic, interesting feel to it. Um, and, you know, then you have a little creature who's just obviously touched down from an alien world, if he can stand up in here. And, you know, then you've got just this whole thing happening. Uh, little tiny bottles. Um, you can get these online. Uh, little tiny bottles could provide... I put a feather in this one, but you could have... I've put some little message, like I, I get a little piece of paper and write like a message and put it in, like a message in the bottle and put that on one of the sand um, ones. So you got lots of choices, right? There's Just let your imagination go crazy because uh, there's just so many ideas that we have. And hello to Blendy. Hi, Katie. Um, a couple of you have popped in while I'm chatting. Hello, Vicky. Just wanted to make sure I didn't miss anybody. So I hope that is getting your motor running as to all the bits and pieces that you can start pulling together and making fun things out of. Now, I think let's actually get creating and let's make this little frog guy, okay? Because why not? You know, it's it's just fun. I think we'll we'll uh, have a lot of fun with the little frog dude. Uh, in the past, we've done other ones. This is one of the ones that I've done in the past is this little foxy guy, which, of course, you guys have seen. Let me set him up here. I think you'll be able to see him there. Um, just, just for fun, you know, um, we just want to make as many nifty little things as we can. Uh, and I'm trying to make them simple, like blobs. So they're basically an oval with a face. I'm not putting a lot of features on these, just keeping it really super simple. Let me hold him up a little bit and make sure you can kind of see him a little bit better. Is that a little bit easier to see? Um, it looks like my studio is a little darker. I'm not real sure what that's about. doesn't usually be that dark, but I think, wow, that, that perspective holding it in my hand was really crazy. I have a delay on my computer. So I can't always see what you guys see for a few more minutes. And it I just popped up and like, whoa, that looks crazy. All right. So I mixed up some polymer clay. If you're unfamiliar with working with polymer clay, I have videos on that. I have other things online that you can find that are in different places like Fire Mountain or whatever. But I have quite a number of little video uh, videos on polymer clay stuff. I also have a creative circle membership it's ten dollars a month and you get a new project every month we work with primarily polymer clays and epoxy clays and we just have a lot of fun but we go through the basics and, and there's plenty of opportunity to ask questions we have a sunday uh live chat exclusive to the group where we continue to create so it's a really great way to get your polymer clay stuff um revving uh, adorable, says Suzanne, so cute, says Danny. Um, Corin says, loving the lavender idea opens the mind to all sorts of lovely smelling herbs. Thank you. Um, actually, that's a great idea, like la uh, rosemary. It dries very nicely, so you could dry a few sprigs of rosemary to use as shrubs in your world. Then you get that beautiful smell as well. And any kind of dried herb that you crumble and sprinkle around is going to make a beautiful little covering on the surface so you may choose to put like sand down first so you've got something to stick things into and then scatter your flower petals or your herbs on top so good Corinne I'm glad you like that uh, I'm curious to see how you guys will um, create in fact let me see if I can grab um, the link to the Christie's Creative Neighborhood I mentioned that and this is my public um, Facebook group so if you want to, let me grab that link. If you want to show us what you make on that link, 
uh, and share with us. We'd love to see it. Um, that is where I sometimes do other live chats as well. And again, Corinne, once you make something with all your herbs and stuff, I want to see it. So um, if you can bring it on over there and, and post and share with us, that'd be awesome. Okay, so I just mixed up some polymer clay. I use Primo. That is the brand that I love. It's made by the Sculpey people. But Fimo is great. Um, there's, there's a number of other little clays out there. I would try to go with the brand name. Sometimes you get the ones like, at, you know, at, uh, any, any store or whatever that's got them really, really cheap. And I have heard that they don't do as well. They're a little gooey and stuff like that. So try to get the name brands like Sculpey or Primo or Fimo um, if you want to have a more pleasant crafting experience. So the first thing I'm going to do is just roll out a ball and I'm going to make the body and the head out of this. So I figure about this size is pretty good. And I think we can see this. I'm going to give him a little pillow. This might be too big of a pillow. Let's put this down and he can just prop up here so I think you can see him a little bit better. How does that sound? Okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this I have mixed up the clay. I've gotten it warm and ready to use. Um, and as you touch it, it will warm up. So you shouldn't have any problem with it being uh, easy to use once you've gone through the blending process because that conditions it as well. So I'm not going to do a bunch of basics now. I'm just going to assume that you either know or can find out all about it. So what I want to do now is I want to make a neck to separate the head from the body. And I'm kind of just playing with it, rubbing it back and forth in my fingers to create this blob at the top and bringing the body down a little bit. So it's kind of like a matchstick kind of a feel. And I'm mushing it out so that it goes a little bit more wide. Going to press it down here so that it can stand up. And this is what you end up looking like, like a Parcheesi board, a game piece or whatever. So it flares out a little bit at the bottom. It narrows at a neck and it's got a head. Okay, that's um, a fairly simple shape, but it may take you two or three tries to get that right. I make this shape a lot, so it's kind of muscle memory at this point. But this is our basic shape. Now, he's not very tall. If you want him to be taller, just pull on the clay, and you'll get him a little skinnier and a little taller. So it's just kind of up to you what you want. Make sure he can stand up. And then I'm going to just take a needle tool. Now, I've got a handful of tools here. Let me show you a couple of these. Um, obviously... Often we'll use a cutting blade with polymer clay. It's just a nice wide blade to chop with. And then I have a couple of uh, things that I use. A needle tool, of course, is important. But I've got uh, several tools that I've designed and are on my site. This one is my go-to. It's the Wow It's Awesome tool. I love this tool. And then there's also the Can't Live Without It tool. Those are all great. And I, I use all of them frequently. But right now I'm going to grab my needle tool. And I'm going to start the mouth and I'm just going to push this down. Now you notice I'm not going up and down like this. I'm kind of pushing it and I'm spreading out this nice big smile. Now your monster can be cranky. All right. Frog monsters have bad days too. So if you want them to be cranky or sad or surprised or whatever you can, but I'm just going to do a big old mouth, you know, big, nice wide open mouth. And um, I'm spreading it back and forth to make sure it's nice and big because I've got to put lips on there, which makes it look a little less big and at this stage I'm going to take my brush and put some powders in. Now the powders that I am using are Pan Pastel. So let me grab this one's red. This is how Pan Pastels come and the reason I love these, these are a chalk powder but they've got like they're a pastel obviously but they've got like a, a resin like a gum resin inside. I've got red now. And I'm just putting it back and forth in the mouth and filling up that mouth at this stage. Because if I wait, it's going to be hard to get it in there once all the lips are on. All right. And um, I'm going to just use a little bit of tape, sticky tape, and just press it on the surface and get rid of the extra. All right. So this pan pastel, as I was saying, has a gum Arabic as part of it, which makes it a little bit more grabby, makes it nice and intense, very thick color. It's fantastic. If you go to my website, I have a link to my Amazon influencer page and you're welcome to go look over there and see the different things that I've pointed out through that you can get through Amazon of stuff that I like to use. But I love pan pastel. Having said that, though, any kind of pigment powder that you have is going to work great. Everything can just be brushed on polymer clay, baked, and it is permanent. So it's it's fantastic. So there's a nice big lips. I'm going to, uh, or uh, mouth, I'm going to make the lips now. All right, so let's see if I missed anything here. Uh, Taco Bell worker says, hey, Grandma. <laughs> well, hey, how are you? What blade is good for cutting jawbreakers? <laughs> 
That I do not know. Uh, and Project Zero, of course, prefers his broadsword or her broadsword. So it's always good to have alternate alternate tools around. So that is terrific. And Cindy says, hello. Hi, Cindy. So now I'm going to take my polymer clay and I'm going to create a bottom and a top lip by just making like a, a snake with two tails. And I'm making it so that it can fit on this bottom right here. And it's just going to go from the corner all the way to the corner. So now he gets a nice bottom lip. Doesn't that look fabulous? Now let's make a little top lip for him. Now the reason I'm doing this is I want this to look froggy. And I know that frogs don't really have the lips like this, but they have a little bit of a bulginess around their lipular area. And so when you cartoonize a frog, often they get these big lips. So we kind of associate that with the frog look. Now, those of you that are scientists among us may prefer not to do this and for, for it's not anatomically correct. But for those of you who don't mind a little bit of caricature, I think we could get away with this just perfectly. So what I'm doing now is I'm putting this top lip in place, I'm pressing it on, and you'll notice that I've got like a little bit of that inside lip showing. If that bothers you, you can get your tool in there and shove it. Polymer clay responds well to shoving, and I'm gonna get my other tool in here and just shove that a little bit and push that out of the way. And now we have a weird opening. So let's get some eyes on this before it freaks anybody out. And I'm going to take these little balls of clay and just shove them right on. Polymer clay sticks to itself very well, especially if you give it, you know, a chance to warm up and then you really kind of push it on there. But if you're having trouble with your clay sticking to itself, you can always use liquid clay, which is um, I'm using, again, the Primo and the Sculpey brands. So there's a translucent liquid Sculpey that just is like a little glue for clay. So it's a clay-on-clay clay kind of glue. All right. Uh, so let's see. Danny says we're try. Oh, good. Thank you for uh, everybody helping each other out here. So I'm going to now take my tool, and I'm going to poke a big old hole because i got to put the eyeball in there, right? Now, you can put this in with more clay. You can use a crystal. You can use a bead. Uh, anything that you want to do to make the eyeball. I have these little fun things. So these are just um, little glass balls on the tip of a wire, a uh, heavy-duty wire. And I carry them on my side as a little um, vial of assorted eyeballs. Uh, but you can also get them directly from my source on Amazon. If you go on my page to my Amazon influencer link, you can find the place that I get them from more in bulk and get them that way if you want. So I'm setting them in like this and then once I put both of them in I can push them against each other and that will help press them both in without smashing things. So look we have a reasonable frog monster face already. So this guy is wildly happy. He has perhaps world domination plans happening in the back of his head but he's trying not to let on. So um, that that could be what's happening there. Who knows? As you change things around and they change their expressions just by small micro adjusting of the clay. All right, so now we're just going to make a couple of little hands. This guy doesn't have to have hands. He could just be rising up from the swamp as he is, but I figure let's do hands because why not? So I made little balls of clay here and I am just going to roll them out into little noodles and then I'm just kind of pressing the end to make it um, blob a little bit. See that? And just making sure that it's got a roundness there and then flattening it out, all right, just like this. Now, you'll be able to go back and watch this video as many times as you want and kind of pause it on what I'm doing if you need to, and uh, it, you'll be able to get a little bit better uh, view of what's happening. I'm going at Christy speed, although I am not caffeinated this morning, um, and thank heavens for that, right? Otherwise, there's no way you'd be able to keep up with my banter. So I'm getting these, um, these little fingers, and I'm using my tool to sort of spread them apart because I got to get my big fat old sausage fingers in there and fine uh, fine tune them. I want them to look um, not look a piece of clay that's been cut, but I want them to look like fingers. So that means I get to touch it a lot. So this is the cool thing about polymer clay is it's okay to have fingerprints. In fact, for most of the projects that I do, it's encouraged. So um, I like organic-y stuff. Fingerprints make a wonderful little texture. So go for it, man. Touch your stuff all over. All right, getting fingers in there. Thank you guys for helping each other out for tech stuff. And now I am just tweaking this stuff. 
getting those fingers. And this makes them a little bit skinnier and longer too. So you end up with wide open fingers. Now there's a reason for that, which you will find out in a minute. I'm taking my blade and remember that there's a cutting side and a non-cutting side and an oddly sharp edge for some mysterious reason on most blades. Um, but we're just going to trim the ends off of here. And I trim these because I'm so very clever. I trim these at a bit of an angle. Why? Because then the angle just goes flunk right onto the body in the perfect angle for it to just attach groovily. Dark like that. Okay, so now he's got two little hands. You could leave it like this, like he's reaching for a hug. You could spread those hands out like he is running at you to grab you for some mysterious reason. You could have him holding something like a little egg with a baby inside or um, a breakfast omelet or whatever. Or this is what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these little hands and I'm going to interlace the fingers. So I'm just going to bring it together and I'm going to tuck one finger inside the other finger. So can you see what I'm doing? I've got my own big fingers in the way. So hopefully you can kind of see what I'm doing. And I, you know, I just made three fingers. It's enough already. But I'm just pushing all those fingers together so they interlock. And I don't know. I just think that makes a kind of fun way of getting his fingers out in the front so we can see them and it's cute and whatever. All right. So now we're going to just put in a little bit of powder and I think we're going to be good. Put a crystal in his hand, said Sue. Oh, gosh, yes. He could be holding. Let's see what I got over here. Um, this is one of the things on my site that you can get. But there's some, some amethyst crystals in here. He could be holding an amethyst crystal because why not? So let's get this tool to open up some space in here. And let's tuck that crystal in. Now you could use a little bit of glue to hold that crystal in, um, or you can leave it just like this. He's coming back from the, the amethyst mines with his find, which I think is great. Uh, good, good suggestion. So now, now the only thing left to do is to put a little powder on. This is always optional, but it's a game changer. And I think you should always plan on getting a little bit of powder in your life. Um, pan pastels, again, absolutely my choice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put it in places that I think are interesting. So I'm putting a little bit of green around the corner of his mouth, darker green. I'm going to put a little bit around his eyeball. Um, I got some dark blue. What if we put a little bit of dark blue right around the eye? Now, it's okay, I'm getting it on top of the eye, but uh, that just wipes right off. Don't even worry about it. Let's get some of that off of there. And if it doesn't come off immediately, it will once it's baked. It's no problem. We'll talk about baking in a minute. So now I've got some fun color up there. Let's add a bit more of this green underneath him, behind the crystal, maybe in between some of the fingers just a little bit just to give it some fun color and then I've got a light green too um, that I'm going to use to kind of just accentuate the tips of the fingers um, so that they look a little bit more noticeable maybe some of the lip part will get some of this uh, and and then I think he needs just a little bit more red down in his mouth he's lost some of his redness so I'm going to get it in there and go back and forth in there and you can even add some red to the top of his mouth if you want to give him something. The neat thing about Pan Pastel, and this is why I'm recommending it very highly, is that you can add color on top of color on top of color. And it is always going to be fantastic. Um, it's going to grab and just make a better and better and better uh, layering of stuff. Now, since he's got a purple crystal, he probably should have some purple dots on himself, right? Don't you think? So let's get some of these purple dots on here. That just makes them a bit more fun all around. So now this is what we end up with. We end up with our crystal totem frog monster. And the other frog monster could have another crystal too. And they could just be walking in a little line from the crystal mines. Because then you could have your big crystal cluster here that they've grabbed their crystals from. And they're just walking back to wherever it is that they take their crystals. I don't know what frog monsters are up to, but anyway, so let's, I'm gonna flip this around and we're gonna just talk about baking and answer questions and such. So be ready, here comes the flip. What? Here we go, hi, did you miss me? Here I am, hello everybody. Okay, uh, let's see if I missed anybody. The frog prince with his amethyst wand. If you have one of those little um, crown shaped beads, one of them could definitely be a frog prince, which would be super fun. Uh, anything else? Or the world he will dominate, yes, with his 
the the prince with his crystal um, magic, etc. See, there's whole worlds on here. Um, just so many worlds. Uh, and that's what I love about these. It really gives a chance for your imagination to get crazy. It lets us get in touch with our inner child, and we need that more. Being adult is dumb. Uh, we have to. We have to be mature. Being mature is okay, but being an adult is dumb. And we have to do a bunch of adult stuff, and sometimes we just want to be a kid again. And this is a great way to kind of connect into that uh, kid self and be creative and just get in the flow. It's like a kind of meditation in that everything else just goes away and you're making your little world domination um, <laughs> frogs at their amethyst mines, creating their magic amethyst palace of um, wonderful frog magic. So it just goes from there and then they need bigger worlds and now there needs to be a pond and what if there is a dinosaur that lives in the pond you know etc i mean there could be just so many things so you just need to let your brain have fun with this give yourself permission to play why not all right so let me talk about baking for a minute so here's the dude that we just finished let me see if i can get him up close and see he's a little wobbly looking but I think we're looking pretty cute here with some little dots and such. He's got kind of oddball eyes. They're a little, little goofy. So um, sometimes this happens, especially if I'm kind of looking at it upside down or whatever. But here's the other guy who's less goofy, but he does not have his crystal yet. I'm sorry. I've got to get my face out of there so the camera will be able to focus. Um, but it's just like one of so many things that you could make. And what I love about these little lump type creatures you don't have to worry about legs and everything else because those are a little bit tricky to make sure the support and stuff. Not that there's anything wrong with tricky and, and figuring out those things, but I love these because it's just like a little creature and you can build the world around it and it's done. It's good. It's easy. Um, Sue says, love that. Mature is good, but being an adult is dumb. <laughs> right? So true, right? Um, uh, Pondosaurus. Exactly. It would have to be some sort of like a, you know, like a salamander dragon dinosaur pondosaurus um he's gonna sing in a moment he does look like he's about ready to sing doesn't he and it could be a soundtrack we can have such fun with this all right so let me talk about um baking very quickly i do have a youtube video with baking when i'm all done here and it's posted a little later today i'll add the links that i just talked about so you can find them all the time i'll make a link over to my amazon with the powders and my site and um to uh, the tool and to my baking video, but essentially polymer clay is does not air dry. So you make it and when you feel like, okay, I'm done, I want to keep it forever, then you bake it. If you go like, I hate it, I'm going to make another thing, also good. You can mash it up and do it again. Um, but when you're ready to bake it, it just bakes in your regular oven. The instructions are on the clay package. It's very simple. You basically preheat the oven with an oven thermometer inside because ovens are dirty, rotten liars especially the little tabletop ovens, which we tend to use once you get into the polymer clay and you get its own little polymer oven so you don't have to have polymer smell and all into your brownies and such. Um, give them a microphone. <laughs> it could be frog karaoke. Ah, see how many things we could do with this. Oh, I love that. Okay, Lynn, I'm going to have to put that off in your corner that you're going to have to have a singing frog with a microphone. I will be expecting to see that sometime soon, all right? John Sultan says, um, sorry, John, this is not the place for you, I'm afraid. We're going to remove you. Uh, sorry about that. We, uh, If you're for real, we definitely feel bad for you, but um, this is not the place for that. Anyway, um, so if somebody else can, I think I can delete it, but right now there's no other comment, so it just keeps going to the heart, which I'm not wanting to put heart on. Uh, <laughs> um, anyway, I got myself distracted. So there's so many things that we could do and create and have fun, and this is the point. The, the point is that we want to find the stuff we have, imagine what it could be, make little things, and create a little, little world that is intended to be temporary right? It's intended just to be something we look at and we enjoy until we take it apart and make something else. So you could start in having a whole little world's box or cabinet or whatever, where you start putting your little dishes and your pieces and your moss and your um, uh, stones and your all your stuff, and then take it out as you want to use it and make a new thing, put it on its little display, enjoy that, put maybe a mirror behind if you've got stuff behind you want to see on the back side. Um, and then when you are done, you take it apart and do another one. What fun, right? Okay, so does anybody have any questions about the process? Like I said, I'll add some links when I'm all done so those of you who will be watching it 
not live, but just whenever, um, will be able to uh, just enjoy the links easy breezy. So let me get, now I can get rid of this guy, um, put him in there, unwanted, there we go. Uh, okay, I think we got rid of our guy there, so that's good. All right, good. That's that's always distracting. It happens. It's life. It's not a big deal. But if anybody is worried, so then that'd be good uh, to know that I'm on on top of it. All right. So anybody else with a question about this little world concept? Now's your time because I'm going to put a bow on this thing here in a minute, and I will again direct you over to my site where I have a few little world kits that I just put up yesterday. Um, Suzanne says, my eyes are now trained on good little dishes. Like we sometimes need an excuse to go to the thrift stores or yard sale or whatever. And now finding things for our little world can be added to the list. It is a gift to be a creative person because you see the world differently. And people that are not actively using their creativity do not always understand us. That is not the problem with us or even necessarily the problem with them. We're just in a loop of reality that they don't access as easily. But you've got to go to the Goodwill and the thrift stores, yes, to find yourself. But if you're that kind of person who sees the possibilities in everything and you've got an endless collection of weird odds and ends, welcome to being an artist. There's nothing wrong with that. It's good. So it is tricky sometimes if you live with someone who doesn't quite get that. Um, just do your best to help each other understand and be kind to each other if you can. But just know... It's not something wrong with you that you have to fix. This is part of being an artist and a part of being a creative person is you see what could be, which is a beautiful thing. So go do it. Get your stuff. Gather it up. Have fun looking through it, putting together your little world collection. That's what I've loved about the little worlds myself is that I go through all of my stuff. So I'm, I'm standing here talking and right over here I have my shelves full of things. So I start going through all my stash and go, what could I part with? What do I have a little extra? <laughs> Danita says, yeah, tell it to my mother. Most of us tend to live with someone who doesn't get that. It's just as the way it goes. But I think everybody's got something. Most everybody has something that they like that other people don't like. So if you can help them see, you know, mom, when you sit, and I'm not sure this is your mom, I'm thinking of somebody else's mom. You know, when you sit on the radio and you just listen to your um, music from when you were a child over and over and over again all the time, you're the only one who likes that, but you like it, right? So you don't want me coming in and telling you not to do it because you like it. Same thing, leave me alone and my piles and piles of stuff because it's all good. So it's hard, it's hard to live with others sometimes, but we can do it if we just have kindness as best we can. Um, but just know it's your, I'm giving you permission. It is not your fault. There's nothing wrong with you. It is a good thing. So just try to keep it into a square mile. If you get farther than that, then you might have a problem. Uh, but otherwise uh, we've got it all ready to go. Now you're ready to make little worlds. Okay, so. If you have any other questions, feel free to message me. Please consider joining, obviously, my public Facebook page for sure, but maybe our little creative worlds because we make all kinds of fun stuff there. Uh, creative Circle. We make all kinds of fun little artistic worlds over there of all kinds of stuff, and we'd love to have you with us. So that's it. I'm done um, for my rambling today. Thank you, and I hope you had some fun, and I hope this inspires you to gather and create and then share with us or whatever your community is online. I will see you again on face, uh, YouTube here and on Facebook as well um, as I do more of these. But in the meantime, happy, happy creating. Have fun being a little kid in your little world. Mwah. Bye. Now, if I can turn it off. That's always the hard part. Hmm.